Hi, today we'll go over VulnUni, which is another VulnHub machine. My name is Alper. I'm working as a penetration tester and cybersecurity consultant. As usual, we will start with our discovery and map with dash small s and capital P for ping sweep, trying to find the target. Here we have the IP address of our target and we will proceed with a more extensive scan. As usual, I'll be doing a version scan for all ports, hoping to find an initial attack vector. VulnUni is a bit different compared to other CTF machines in the sense that it only has one port open, port 80 open. And when we visit that page, it's VulnUni, um, a site that teaches cybersecurity, which is a nice touch, I find. Since some functionalities of the site seem to work, others not, we can navigate the page. Whenever we are facing a web application, it's always nice to have a feel of the application, the, the functions that work, the functions that might work, the functions that we might leverage for further attacks. As I couldn't find any direct SQL injection and the like, I'll go back to Nikto to scan the target. Nikto will just give me an idea about possible misconfigurations and potential risk factors that I could, as an attacker, leverage. Nikto doesn't have any uh, results that are very interesting at this stage. Yes, we have an internal IP address disclosure, which is localhost, so no big deal there. Since Nikto doesn't give me much, I'll go enumerate further with Deerbuster. As always, you can use GoBuster, Deerbuster, whatever you feel comfortable with. And in this case, Deerbuster also doesn't give me much. So this machine is a bit trickier at first than uh, most of CTF machines in the sense that enumeration takes a different, a whole different approach. I'm left with source code analysis. I'll just check the source code of the pages. This is one of the places where we see a stark difference between what Hollywood tells us hackers do and what we do in real life. So yeah, we read those boring lines of codes. And we do this for every page. Yes, for every single page. As I edit this, these videos, I'll just save you the time, but you'll just come across something that was left in the source code saying that, yes, this was, you know, just suspended until update. And it turns out this is our way in. It's an E-class platform that we can reach and which presents us with a login page. It's not a platform that I was very familiar with, so I had to do some research about it. Trying to see if there were any known vulnerabilities or any exploits, which is usually better. And yes, it seems that there's a couple of things we can use, but first we'll need to check the version of the E-Class platform that we are facing. Hopefully, the exploit DB page also gives us an idea about how we can check the version, see if we are among the vulnerable versions. We'll just do that. And fair enough, we are we what well, we are facing one of the vulnerable versions of E-Class. I'll just start Burp Suite. Exploit DB tells me that the username uh, in the login page has an SQL injection vulnerability. So this is the initial approach I'll take. I'll intercept a failed login. I'll just try to log in with test and test, username test and uh, password test, as you can see here. I'll just copy this request to a text file and I'll be using SQL map 
to exploit it further. Exploiting SQL injections in POST requests with SQL map is fairly easy. You just save your request with a text file, as you can see here. And all we have to do is use um, SQL map with the parameter dash, dash r so that SQL map knows to try to exploit whatever parameters it sees inside the POST request. Yes, this checks out. So, as per the exploit DB entry, we do have a vulnerable username parameter. I'm now enumerating, I'm enumerating the databases with dash dash DBS. We seem to have a bunch of uh, databases. I'll just start from top to bottom, in no speci specific order. And with um, dash capital D, I want to enumerate this database and dash dash tables to list the tables that are under this database. What I'm looking for, obviously, at this stage is some credentials so that I can log in because, again, the ExploitDB page gives me a potential vector to upload a file once I'm logged in. And yes, under the table user, we have columns named username and password. These are this might contain the information I'm after, so I'll just dump these. In real life, it's always good to have, to be careful with what we dump. I remember a couple of years ago, I found myself with the home addresses of over 22 million uh, citizens of a certain African country because I wasn't careful. I just put the dash dash, dash dump and yeah. I'm trying the credentials. I, I have seen one user named admin, which uh, seemed a bit more interesting. That's the first one I tried, and it seems to work, which gives me access to a bunch of administrative functions. Again, with web applications, it's always nice to have a feel of what we can do. Functions like such as file upload or password reset or anything related to user management could be for us quite interesting. Even better, if we do have functions like sending emails or ping, the like could be a way for remote code execution as well. Here in the admin page, I just noticed that the source code has the password information in clear text. Just a little bonus, I guess. It's not something that we advise. As you can see here, I like cats is kept open in the source code of the page while it's uh, masked, obviously, when I look at the page. Here, I'll try this authenticated PHP file upload. I first need to go to the restore course that uh, that PHP page, see if I can reach it, if it exists. You know, you can never be too uh, cautious yes in fact there is this upload function i'll be i'll try to exploit but here i'll have to upload the file as a zip file so my shell.php should be zipped i'll be using metapreter here and with a reverse tcp php metapreter reverse tcp this is my attacker ip address and the port 4444 You'll just need to tweak a little bit so that the PHP output works. So just getting rid of the comment symbols at the beginning and adding the question mark and uh, the end tag to finish the to end the PHP script properly. That's what I'm doing here. And once this is done, all I'll have to do is to upload upload. Normally, we could upload the, the file as it is, but in this case, as we have seen in the exploit DB entry, we will need to zip the file first. And as I'm using Metapreter, which stands for Metasploit Interpreter, I will receive the incoming connection with Metasploit. I'm using MSF console and multi-handler 
just, you know, as the name suggests, handle the incoming connection. I'll set my payload, my localhost, attacker IP address, and local port, just as I did moments ago for the payload, the shell PHP file. I always do a check with show options to make sure everything is set properly. And with exploit, I'll start the handler. And I'll just zip shell that PHP since this web application needs it to be zipped. And this is the file I'll upload here. Once uploaded, yes, we will see that it's decompressed automatically. So the decompression, the unzipping process will be done by the application. I don't have to interfere at this stage. And all I have to do now is to run the PHP script by calling the page. Hopefully with some luck, this was a default install, so I will not have to poke around for a folder name or a parameter or anything similar. I will just it will just run straight forward. And I'll just change the name of my shell. And if everything worked fine, I should have my connection coming back to me with a meta-interpreter shell. We can use, of course, a regular, the reverse a PHP shell and the like. A meta-interpreter gives us some additional functionality and I like to use it as much as I can. Here, yes, we do have, again, a limited privileges. So www data is our user. As always, I will not spoil the fun of elevating your privileges. You can see that reaching the user flag, that txt file is fairly straightforward from this point on. I enjoyed Vulnuni as it gave us some opportunity to enumerate further than we normally do for CTF and CTF-like computers. As always, if you liked or enjoyed this video, please like, feel free to subscribe. If you have any comments, please comment below or just shoot me an email. Always happy to help. And I hope to see you soon in another video, hopefully with a machine that is at least as interesting as this one.